There's a Pasuk in Teira, which of course is quoted in Hasidus and in many Sifrei Musar. Ho'alikim osa es ha'odom yoshor v'heima bikshu cheshboi nesrabim. Which means literally, Ho'alikim, the Creator, God Almighty, made Adam yoshor. Yoshor means uh, straight, to go on a straight path. And they sought many other considerations. That's the Pasuk. What that means is that according to this Pasuk, and of course there's other ideas and other Musers, but according to this Pasuk, a person was created good and he corrupts himself. Not a person was created corrupted and needs to correct it, but Yashar, a person is created to be good, to be straight. The corruption comes from the person. Of course, the, the prime example of this, the ideal example of this, is Taka Adam Rishn and Chava, who were created Yashar, they were created to walk straight, and Bikshu Chashbein Rab, they had all kinds of considerations, all kinds of uh, other thoughts, and the other thoughts that they had ultimately came down to, if you will, being smarter than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They wished to give them a task and they had another thought. Adam and Chava were told, live in Gan Eden, eat fruit. And it says in Chazal, my peidi mitzvahs, the fruit that they were before eating was mitzvahs. And everything would fall into place simply by sitting in Gan Eden and eating fruit. And Adam and Chava were not satisfied. They wanted to know Das Tevara. They wanted to know about the contrast between good and evil. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted them to know only Eitz HaChayim, only good, absolute good. And this curiosity to know Eitz Das Tevara set up all of history. And all of history is in comparison to Adam and Chava in the Gan Eden, all kinds of considerations and you have to have a, a, a plan and a plan to a plan and a and a correction, and a correction to a correction, a bidur, and a bidur to a bidur, and a gilgal, and a gilgal to a gilgal. None of this would have been necessary if other al just did what they were told. Now, in the human experience, psychologically, in other words, we talk about people like you and I. Where is this yashus? Where is this yashur? We are all products of hundreds of generations of history and each one of us carries the baggage of the hundreds of the generations that came before us both the good and the bad beginning of course with Adam and Chava eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil which means to say we start off not Yosha we start off with all the mistakes and all the compromises and all the inhibitions and all the blockages that have accumulated of earlier generations. And there's essentially two things that we do in our life. One is live with what's left over of our humanity, considering how much baggage we're carrying from our past. And two, we try to fix a little bit of our past. Some fix more, some fix less. And of course, the more we fix, the freer we become, the more Adam we become, the more Yosha we become. And that's essentially life for humanity, Bechlal and Yidin, especially, and in times of Golos. More specifically, we have a lot of imposed inhibitions and constraint and frustrations, which really are inherited, and we, we live within those limitations, and a little bit we try to correct. So where do you see in me, in you, in us, the Alakim Masadam Yasha? And I, 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 the answer, I think, to the question is, just look at children. Children are innocent. We say children are naive. But children are innocent. The innocence of children makes them good. Children don't need to learn how to tell the truth. Children need to learn how to lie. Children don't need to learn how to be honest. They have to learn how to steal. Children don't need to learn how to overeat. 
I'm sorry, how to eat well. They have to learn how to overeat because their nature is good. And this is true across the board. Children don't need to learn how to be motivated. They need to learn how to be lazy. Because you look at a baby, they're very motivated, they're very driven. That's the yoshar. The reality is that as a child ages, that innocence, which is the basis for his sincerity and his goodness and his honesty and his energy, are challenged. And uh, most people, some earlier, some later, learn these bad lessons, adopt these bad habits, and become some of us retain our innocence and our beauty longer, till 12, 13, 14, 15 perhaps. Others lose it much, much earlier. And of course, the later one is corrupted by the world, the better they are in the big picture in the long run. But most people, unfortunately, are compromised. And then of course, if you're a serious person, and a mature person, and an honest person, and a wise person, you spend the rest of your life trying to get back what you had naturally as a child. Now imagine a child who had the integrity to hold on to those midas, not to give them up. Hold on to his innocence, hold on to his honesty, hold on to his energy, hold on to his curiosity. That's an ideal life. It's it's a, it's a wonderful life. Will such a person be hurt by the world? I think not. They'll be challenged by the world. To the contrary, the, those of us who compromise, which is the vast majority of us, are hurt by the world. But if you're principled, you live on faith, you draw strength from faith, you move forward, and eventually you develop the skills of how to be yashar in a world of cheshbay nisrabim, how to navigate a world of, of convolution, of entanglement, of dishonesty, of laziness, of bad habits, uh, with this integrity of yashos that, that you see in children and that you see rarely uh, in people as they become adults, that they hold on to this yashros. In the language of Chabad, this is what we call a beinini. That's what a beinini is. He just doesn't make the mistakes in the first place rather than make the mistakes and need to correct them. And that's the pshat in the Pesach. God gave us what we need to live. And if we would just trust that what He gave us is sufficient, and not have cheshbenes rabim, like my friends lie, why shouldn't I? My friends steal, why shouldn't I? If I don't lie, I don't steal, I'm not popular. Uh, I miss out on something. If you can retain the holakim asas adam yashar, and not be affected by the cheshbenes rabim you see around you, you can grow with that yashros, with that fairness, with that honesty, that straightness. And then you're a mensch. A mensch who doesn't have to fight with himself and deal with all of his bad habits and his uh, compromises and try and do chuvuk, heal them, correct them, but it's yashar. Olakim must call them yashar. Man was made to walk straight. Yashar, this is a person. Unfortunately, heima bikshu cheshbeinis rabim, so many of us have reasons why we can't afford to be yashar. And then, of course, we spend all of our lives trying to regain it. This is linked to the Rambam that everybody knows, the Rambam in Hilchus Deis, where the Rambam talks about derech ha-mitzua. The Rambam talks about walking in the center. A person shouldn't be leading too much to the right, a person shouldn't be leading too much to the left, a person should be in the middle. Don't be too cheap, don't be too generous, be in the center. Don't be too involved in materialism. Don't live a life of deprivation, of depravity, live in the middle. The Rambam gives a number of examples where a person is supposed to take an extreme. For example, when it comes to anger, Rambam says go to the opposite extreme. But most midas, a person should be in the emtza, the center, mitzur. <clears throat> in some cultures, they use this Rambam to support what they call centrism. Centrism means in the middle, not extreme. To use an expression from the old country, to God and to light, to God and to man, be uh, religious, 
But there's a world, and you have to deal with the world, you have to deal with people, don't get carried away. And their source for the centrism, for this sort of in-between uh, and Yiddishkeit Cheshbenes, or even in, in the modern Orthodox between Lahavdl Elf Avdos, Chokhmas Atoira, and other Chokhmas, it's also a form of centrism. But this is wrong, it's incorrect. It's incorrect because this reading of the Rambam's Derech HaMitzu, of centrism, is really pshara, it's compromise. It's compromise. I'm not going to be too much into this, I'm not going to be too much into this, I'm going to be in the center. The Rambam didn't have compromise in his, in his, in his dictionary. The Rambam is not speaking about compromise. The Rambam is not speaking about making everybody happy. The Rambam is not speaking about a little kodesh and a little chayl because you have to live in the real world, and you live amongst goyim and so on. No, not at all. The Rambam is talking about the truth. And the Rambam is saying the center is emes. In other words, you're pursuing the middle path, not because you're trying to please everybody, not because you're trying to be in many worlds, but because that's where God is. God is in the center. God is not an extremist. God does not believe people should be starving. God does not believe people should be completely indulgent in materialism. God does not believe people should get stuck in a way that they become dependent. But God does not believe that people should be so calculated with that stuck that they're saving money for their great, 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 great grandchildren's retirement. The center's emiss. And the Rambam is proposing walk in the center, not as a compromise, walk in the center because it's emiss. But there's a problem. And the problem is, this Rambam's assertion that a person should walk in the center and that the center is not compromised, but that the center is MS, is only true if it's absolutely consistent. Or as I said before, Bainini. Holokim Asadam Yosh. When a person gets into the Cheshbainus Rabbim, when a person does not maintain this center, you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, they're walking in the middle. Fridays and Shabbos, they're very religious. Sunday, they're very involved in materialism. You cannot walk in the center if you're not able to maintain that center. If a person is not able to be constantly in the center, which usually means they're lower than the middle, then the only way to deal with that is to be higher than the middle. When you go off the path to the left, you can't just return to the middle, you have to go to the right to, to, you know, to bend the rod back in the opposite direction. So the Rambam's Derech HaMitzua, first of all, is not at all pshara, it's not about compromise. It's about truth. And of course, truth is godly, which means a person's balance between world and godly and Avedis Hashem is balanced because they're in pursuit of God, not in pursuit of world. And as one is involved in serving on Kaddish Baruch Hu, this is the correct path. But it's really only for a Benyani. For the Baal Teshuvah, you can't afford to be in the center. The center is not preserving enough. It's not going to protect you. You have to take an extreme. So again, it's the same principle. If you're a Benyani, if you're a person who has not sinned, the center is for you. And not because the center is compromised, because in the center you have emes. If a person has gone in one direction, or not in that direction, they can no longer afford to walk in the center. Now they need to do Teshuvah. They need to take an extreme. Why am I beginning tonight's class with this? Obviously, it has to do with the Maimir. Our Maimir says, our Maimir is based on the Pasuk, Ki Sishma. Bekeila Shema Lekecha Lishmei Das Kol Mitzvesav. Ashanichim Tzavach Hayim Lasis Hayoshor Bini Hashem Lekecha. And tonight's class is going to be on Yashar. And I, I believe that the insight into Yashar that Amaimed is going to be discussing is very connected to the Adam Yashar that the Abishta created. The center is true. Just listen to the Abishta, trust the Abishta, and you'll be good. But once you fall off the path, it becomes very, very difficult to return to that Yashar. So this is why I'm giving you this introduction. But I want to develop it further. I want to elaborate. I want to go deeper into it. And I want to say as a disclaimer 
that I'm sharing these ideas with you on this Maimed because I feel like they're connected to this Maimed. I think I'm giving you depth to this Maimed. But I want you to know that I'm not certain if I'm not overstepping my bounds. I'm not reading too much into the Maimed. So I'm going to share additional ideas with you, in addition to the ideas that I shared so far, based on my understanding of the Maimed. And of course, I'm certainly not trying to mislead, and I hope I'm correct also. In the Ayyem Yem, on the very, very first page, which is the entry of Yutas Kislev. So the bottom of the page, the second half of the page is Yutas Kislev, because that year Yutas Kislev was Shabbos. And if you know how the Ayyem Yem is structured, every page is a week. On the left side of the page, you have four days. On the right side of the page, you have three days because Shabbos, the Hayyem Yem is a little longer. The very first Hayyem Yem is the right side of the page. The bottom half of the page is Yudas Kislev. And that year, Tav Shem Gimel, it was Shabbos. The top half of the page is a letter from the Rebbe Rashab. This letter from the Rebbe Rashab is one of the most famous letters ever written by any of one of the Chabad Rabbeim. It's the letter about Rosh Hashanah Lechassidus, or as he calls it, the letter Rosh Hashanah Ledach. It was written, I believe, in Samach Aleph in Samach, maybe Samach Kimmel, I may be wrong. And it was written because the Rebbe Rashab was not able to be in Lubav Ashutas Kislev. But the Rebbe made time chetmimim. He made it his business to always be Yutas Kislev, in his words, middekinder, with the children, with the bachlev, with time chetmimim. That year he had to be away, so he wrote a letter which is dated Yudzayin Kislev, which is, of course, the Yom Habris, the Bris of the Middle Rebbe. It's a special day. And um, the letter was read in Lubavitch by the previous Rebbe to the Bachrim. And then from that time on, any time the previous Rebbe was with the Bachrim, and his father was not there, he would read this letter and say, Agris from Tatan, regards from my father. And if I'm not incorrect, even after the Rebbe Rasha passed away, he used to read this letter, and he would say, Agris Fantan. If you're familiar with this, my modem from the previous Rebbe and from our Rebbe, Zeha Yeim Tchilas Masecha, which is a Siddur on Rosh Hashanah, Bekesha Weyitis Kislev. This Zeha Yeim Tchilas Masecha, Bekesha Weyitis Kislev is in this letter. The letter is long, it's a page and a half, two pages. The Rebbe, our Rebbe, who organized Zeha Yeim Yeim, paraphrases. He quotes the letter verbatim, word for word, and there's he just skips a few lines here, then there's a break, a few lines, and he, he consolidates the heart, the essence of that letter into, I don't know, 10 or 12 lines. And he talks about Hasidus. The Hasidus is the beginning, it is Kisiv, is the Shoshana of Hasidus, that's the beginning of the Pnimi Sakavan of what Abish created the world to divorce Lagadish, Kalmida, Ro, Maguna, to remove from ourselves any inappropriate Midas, and to purify our hearts to be Kalim, Fralokus, and so on. And it finishes with the words, Yashar Yechazu Faneme. That's how the letter finishes in the Yem Yem. Yashar Yechazu Faneme. And they translate these words literally, Yashar, you'll walk straight, you'll see that you'll meet the face of God. Yashar Yechazu Faneme. You just walk straight, you meet the face of God. Now, this is very, very interesting. And I'll tell you why it's interesting. Because Paneme, the face of God, which we talked about in, in a lot of detail last week when we turned the second part of this, Maimir, the Pneumius of Elokus is Atma Saint Saf, is very high levels of godliness. And it's very high levels of godliness, which you cannot know through an intermediate. You have to know directly. The pneumius of the person reaches the pneumius of Elokos. Yashar, straight, is reminiscent of the kav. Straight is a ruler, straight line. But straight, a kav, represents limitation, right? If you're familiar with Kabbalah, you know that there's Kav and there's Eagle. There's a line and there's a circle. The circle is a metaphor for Ein Sof. It's a metaphor for Sevev Kalaman. The line is a metaphor for Gavul. It's a metaphor for Mamala Kalaman, Eris and Kalim. Here you have a mime that says, Yosha Yach, you walk straight, the middle of the road. You meet Pimis Atma Sein Sof. You serve Hashem, in effect, in a reasonable way, and you meet Atma Sein Sof. 
In other words, the, the presumption is, where is Atma Saint Saf? Atma Saint Saf is in Tshuva. Atma Saint Saf is in Mesiris Nefesh. Atma Saint Saf is in something radical, something extreme, something higher than reason. Here we're saying exactly the opposite. Yosha, just stay on the path and walk on a line. And a line that represents measure and limitation. And again, the, the stipulation is, the catch is, the, the one rule is, you have to be absolutely consistent. You mess up one time, it's gone. But this idea of Yosha, Yachsefanem, is fascinating. It's fascinating. And it's very meaningful to me, it's very intriguing to me. Now, I cannot tell you for sure what Yasha Yechaz of Anemi means. But I will share with you what I think. And again, I don't want to keep apologizing, but appreciate the fact that this is a sheer with a little bit of a license. I'm a little bit allowing myself to infer, perhaps more than I should. And I'm going to give you another Agdama to help illustrate this. Uh, there's a Hemshech and Hasidus called Hemshech Ayim Beis. Shor Shegdim Uterav. Which is a Maimed that Rebbe Rashab begun to say, Shvuis, 1912. Hemshech Terav is very, very famous. It's by far the longest and the deepest Hemshech of Hasidus that we have. It's over 1,400 pages long, without notes. And it's very, very clear that it's very far from finished. It's incomplete. And it's clear that it's not just missing a few pages, it's very far from complete. Had the Rebbe Rashab lived on and completed it, it would be, I don't know, twice the size. And uh, by the Rebbe Rashab, the idea of finishing a Hemshech is not just a dream. The Samach Vov absolutely finishes. He turns over every story, he answers every single question he asked on pages 1, 2, and 3. He answers that on page 537, 543. He answers every question. The base is very far from finished. The Ayim Beis is not only extraordinary because it's so voluminous and it shares so much information, but because it's like a whole new world. It, the Rebbe Rashab, in the middle of his life, started writing in a completely different language, completely different language. There's so many things about the IMBA that separate them from the Maimorim that are before that's remarkable. First of all, as massive as it is, it's much more concise. The IMBA's language is very compact. He'll say something in the IMBA in four or five lines that if it was the Samach Vav, it would take him half a page. In other words, it's not more elaborate. It's less elaborate. It's much, it's very, very crystal clear, very sharp, but very, very concise. If you're familiar with the, with the uh, deeper levels of Hasidus Chabad, it's almost like the Maimonim of the previous Rebbe. The Maimonim of the previous Rebbe, there's a lot of them that are very easy. But the deeper ones, the scholarly ones, are very abstract, and they're very artistic, and they're very vague, and they're also very concise. The words are chosen very carefully. The Hemshe Chaim Beis is, much, much more tight, intellectually precise, than the Maimoran that come before. And I personally believe, by the way, that this evolution begins already with Eter, which is a couple of years earlier. You start seeing the Rebbe Nishma Zayden saying more in less words. And ironically, it's much clearer. There's no room for doubt. You learn Samach Vav, you're sometimes not sure. You learn Ayin Beis, everything is clear. Notwithstanding its uh, conciseness and its compactness. Um, when you learn I am Bayes, and this is my opinion, that's all it is. It's not, uh, I didn't consult a Rebbe, I don't know. This is how I understand it. You discover, in effect, a different approach to Hasidus. There's a sefer called Yisrael Neich HaGodl, which was made about the Yisrael Neich, Polinitsky. And in the sefer, there's a very powerful little episode that's recorded, that the Bishalmeich himself repeated, that when he was learning in Lubavitch, and the Rebbe Rashab started saying Hemshech Ayim Beis, he came up with contradictions between the Ayim Beis and the Samach Vov. Now, if you've learned these Maimorim, you understand that, you, you understand what follows. 
he came to the previous Rebbe with his questions, and he showed him, look, in this mime it says like this, in this mime it says like this. And the previous Rebbe, who was then the son of the Rebbe Rashab, tells him, Yisrael Neich, you can't ask this question. He says, in It's apples and oranges. Yeah, they are. In every area, there's going to be little contradictions. Because the Hamshachayim Beis is, it's a new shita in Kabbalah, it's a new shita in Hasidus, which is fundamentally different than the Maimorim before. And there are hundreds and hundreds of little differences between the conclusions of the Ayim Beis and the Maimorim after the Ayim Beis. And the Maimorim before, based on the fact that it's a different shita, you have to just accept that these are different opinions. In effect, almost different opinions in Kabbalah. And if you delve deeply enough, so what is the difference between pre ayim Beis and ayim Beis? I probably could say this in a lot of different ways, but I'm going to say it this way. Before the ayim Beis, in the end, in the final analysis, what is your greatest possession? Your heart. In the ayim Beis, I, I think this is unquestionable. When you learn the Ayin Beis and you uh, get through the Ayin Beis, what is your greatest possession? Your mind. And the mind and the heart are two worlds. They're two worlds in so many different ways. Uh, first of all, the heart operates like a fist. The mind operates like very delicate fingers. In other words, the whole power of the heart is unity, singularity, force. The whole power of the mind is discernment, subtlety, nuance, dissection. And when you want a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, want a relationship with God Almighty, your heart is going to give you a powerful relationship. The mind is not meant to be powerful, it's meant to be subtle. Which is why the argument is your mind is not going to make you into a big chassid, it's going to make you into a complicated chassid, which is not a chassid at all. Chassid is not supposed to be complex. But what the mind lacks in power and unity, it more than makes up for in depth. And that, I think, is what's special about the Ayim Beis. In the Ayim Beis, there's an incredible message of avoid the depth. A human being was given the ability by God Almighty to meet him face to face. But not to meet him with his heart. Mesidus Nefesh, Tshuva, Kiddush Hashem. To meet him with his mind, Yosha. If a person learns enough Hasidus and keeps his Kli clean, as the Kli is meant to be clean, walking on the path of the mind will bring you to Atma Saint of it's reminiscent of what the Rebbe said in the Sikh of Lech Lech Atavshin and Beis. That when Mashiach is going to come, the key is going to be Chabad, not Chagas. Because Chabad will get you to uh, access of godliness which the heart cannot get you to. Even though the heart has such power, but the heart's power is not subtle, it's not deep, it's powerful, it's strong. The mind subtle is Yosh Yech And this is very, very interesting. And I want to add here the irony of it all, that in the Ayim Beis, there is a much deeper understanding of Islam, Chesedus, and Kalim. In other words, the Ayim Beis is about the mind and the depth, the integrity of, of dissecting and breaking apart and breaking apart and getting to the subtlety and to the nuance and to the fineness. And at the same time, the internalization, how God comes into you, into those little cracks and crevices and spaces and, and order this place, God rests. Uh, the heart is not so pneumistic. It's not how God comes down. How you meet God and you're a bit bitled, you're a bit lost by meeting God, rather than they wish to settling in you. And of course, this is not uh, meant to be a lecture on I am base. And uh, you better hope that I told you something that's not just interesting but actually true. But this is from my experience. This is what the Hemshchayim base is special about, and it's fascinating because. What you discover is that the God Almighty made a human being.
to be in his image to such an extent that his humanity can reach Atma Sein Saf rather than the sacrifice of the humanity. In other words, we always see humanity as very important. The human mind is very important, the heart is very important. But we also see them as very constraining, very limiting. So you have to transcend, you have to go past Adam to Ma'oid. In the Ayan Bays, you get a very, very different message. The Adam, if the Adam is an Adam as it was designed by Asma Saint Sof, the Adam will meet Pneme, Pneme is Asma Saint Sof. The human mind can not only see and meet Padma Padma he can internalize it, bring it out of Kalim into himself. This is, from what I understand, the novelty of the Hemshech Hayim Beis. The Hemshech Hayim Beis is much more about Shuv and about Hislapshus, and to use a Hasidic terminology, about Tachtainim, than the Maimonim before, which are much more about Ratzay and about his battles and Aliyah rather than Amshacham. I'm sorry I used Hebrew words, but I don't have two hours, so I have to a little bit uh, constrain myself. Which leads me to another idea which is also interesting. If you are familiar with Chabad culture, and certainly with Chabad historic culture, you are aware of a deep aversion. There is a built-in concern to the Chabad culture. And that built-in concern is the fear of the maskil, the fear of Haskalah. The idea that a person can learn Hasidus Make it into a philosophy, be an intellectual, and uh, it's not going to change him. It'll be academic. See, he's learning Sayyidis at Torah, the greatest secrets of the Torah, and he can be the same behemoth. And our Abayim warned against this. Our Abayim would say that a person who's not prepared to work on himself in the study of Hasidis, quote, is not allowed to learn Hasidis, and on and on and on. And there is a, a steady pounding of the idea that the purpose of and of course, uh, what has reached us, no Rebbe is more the basis of this philosophy than the Rebbe Rashab, than the author of the Ayin Beis, who was constantly reminding people that it's not about the scholarship and the intellect, it's about the heart and avoid and so on. Yet, there are several occasions where the Rebbe Rashab clearly said a different message. One of them was put in my base. It was about three months before the Rebbe started saying, and he was in Menton, he was in France. And the previous Rebbe describes that put him. There were, there were only two or three people invited to the Fabreng, it was very private. Rabbi Shmuel Gorari, the big chassid, the wealthy chassid was standing by the door, he wouldn't allow in, he was standing and listening. And the Rebbe Rashab did something which was to him quite uncharacteristic. He went on and on and on and on about Miles Haskola. How incredible understanding Hasidus is. Intellectual understanding Hasidus. The Rebbe Rashab used to say that when you open up a Lukut Tate Shabbos morning and you learn and you understand that you died of a visa, you're meeting the Abishta, you're meeting the face of God. And on that occasion, Purim Ayabes, that's 1912 in Menton. The Rebbe also spoke how, although it's true, and he spoke scores of sikhs, maybe hundreds of sikhs, insisting that Haskalah without Avaid is evil. Learning and understanding Hasid is if you don't work on yourself and refine your character and develop good character traits, the learning of Hasid is wasted. On that occasion, he spoke very differently. He said, the human mind is a caliph for lakus. The human mind is a caliph for atzma saint self, for godliness to rest, not only in the limited and complex way, but in the unlimited, infinite, peaceful, where you have not just the intellectual ideas, but you have the godliness itself, which is behind those intellectual ideas. Like the Ayyem Yem that says that the Alter Rebbe was the ultimate Mechaya Mesa, the ultimate resurrector of the dead. He took the cold, dead human mind and made it a caliph for Getlachai. And then there's another sikh, I believe it's Ayin Tess, either Ayin Tess or Ayin Ches, it's a Simchas Tere Dachzchamir, where the Rebbe Rashab again spoke the Milas HaFlof HaSkola. And he said, amongst other things, Dosa Doch Unzer Inyan, Mir Zayin Doch Chabadniks. Chabadniks. And he meant, he meant 
intellectuals. Now, the Rebbe Rashab doesn't need my defense. The Rebbe Rashab does not need my uh, explaining. But there really is not a contradiction between all the scores of Sihis where he spoke so much about Haskola and Avaidez Treif. If you learn Hasidus intellectually as a scholar and you don't work on yourself so that the Hasidus and you meet in a pure place, it's a corruption. It's an adulteration. It's a violation. And this. Because the Rebbe Rashab isn't saying, be a pig and learn Hasidus. The Rebbe Rashab is saying, after all, what your heart can bring you to, and the heart can bring you higher than the mind, the heart can come to the neshama, is not where the mind can get you to. When a person is pure, when a person is open, the human mind can reach Yosha Yech, walk in the middle of the road, don't take any extremes. Yosha, walk straight and use your mind. But use your mind as a Jew with faith and no doubts and no skepticism, but a desire to understand Chochmah Salakus, to understand Hasidus, to understand godliness, Yechazu name where you could meet the face of Atzabus and Sarbachar. You meet God Almighty face to face. Ponim el Ponim. I guess the introduction has been long enough. <laughs> 36 minutes is one of our longest introductions to date. So now let's apply all this information to the Maimir. We have a Maimir. And as it turns out, it's been conveniently divided up into three parts. In the first part of the Maimir, which was two weeks ago's class, we talked about the interplay between Chitsonius and Pneumius. Last week, we talked only about Pneumius, but we discussed aspects in Pneumius. Tfila, Taira, Mitzvahs. This week, we go to the next level. Pneumius Vyatsmus. How the Pneumius will get you, not only to meeting the face of godliness, but the face of God himself, which is above and beyond the face of godliness. And that's what the end of the Pasuk, Kisishma Bakoil, says, La says Hayoshar You can force, you can bring forward through Yoshar, not only the Pneumis of Alakos, but literally the Pneumis Yatma Saint Sof. That's that's what's special about the last third. In other words, the class we're going to have tonight on the handful of lines that we left over. So let's review quickly. Let's bring ourselves up to speed. Chitsoinius means what? I have a relationship with you. But I can't have a relationship with you. I'm in my body and you're in yours. Our bodies are separate. And of course, when we say body and separate, we mean selfishness and ego. My, I'm selfish. I have an ego, you're selfish, you have an ego. We can't meet. There's a contradiction. But there are things that we share. Ideas, feelings, philosophies, politics. So our relationship is not really a relationship between me and you. It's a relationship between the things that bind us. It's totally bedavar. This is called chitonius. I have a relationship with God because of... But then there is an idea where two people have a relationship without a cause. Ain't it loya bedaver? Ponim al ponim. My fire touches your fire. Your touch fire touches my fire. We don't connect because there is an intermediate or an intervening entity which is the basis for our relationship. My soul is meeting your soul. This was the discussion of Pneumis we had last week. We talk about our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chitzainiyas would be if I have a connection to Hashem based on my understanding, a connection to Hashem based on my feeling, a connection to Hashem based on my sensitivities, my senses. So when I have a relationship with Hashem based on my mind, I have no relationship with God. I have a relationship with the God idea. But through the God idea, I have a connection to God Almighty. If I have a relationship with the Abish based on my feelings, 
and feelings that are subjective. In other words, I'm feeling God because I'm feeling myself and He takes care of me, for example. I don't have a relationship with God. I have a relationship with the, what God gives me that makes me feel positively bestowed towards Him and so forth. So then there's Pneumius. Pneumius means there's a place within a Jew that's able to, mate, to meet with godliness on a level that doesn't require a shatchan. There's no link. Not my mind, not my heart, not my senses. My soul, the soul of godliness. In Kabbalah languages of the Makifim. Chaya Yechid. On those levels, it's called Pneumius. So the Maimah says, you go from Chitzonius to Pneumius. You go from relationship to God, which is based on a subjective thing, it's based on a, uh, I like God because of what God does for me, to Emes. A relationship with God just for the sake of the relationship itself. This Pneumius is represented by Yiddishkeit. Tfila, Taira, Mitzvah. In other words, the tools God gave us for us to have a relationship with Him don't us only allow us to have a relationship, they allow us to have a pneumious relationship. When I have a relationship with God on a personal level, based on my own ego, my own understanding, that's chitzenius. But when I'm learning Tait and doing a mitzvah, that's pneumious, because that's where godliness is. But pneumious has levels also. Godliness has levels. Godliness is light. Godliness is light means it's a reflection of God, it's connected to God, and it reveals God. But it isn't God. It's the light of God. And the light of God is perceived by us in the light of our soul. It's the meaning of ponim and ponim, pneumius and pneumius. But there could be measure. So last week we didn't concern ourselves with that. We just simply spoke about Adev ki sishma bakoil. To get inside the voice, to get to the pneumius. Tonight's class talks about Lassas Yosha. The possibility that a Jew can not only have, number one, a relationship with God that's subjective, that's based on himself, Chitenius. Number two, a relationship with God that's based on the intimacy and experience of God that is, which is Pneumius. But in effect, Pneumius Vyatsma says itself, as if you were to say you're not meeting godliness, but you're meeting David to himself in an experienced way. Yoshor Yechazu That's why I gave you this introduction, and I believe that this is really the intent of this Maimed, although when I teach it to you, some of you will say, and perhaps correctly, that I'm a little bit inferring. I'm deciding what the Rebbe means. And I told this, I warned you when I started that that was going to happen. So let's now read. Let's go to the text. And appreciate the process, the progression. Chitzenius versus Pneumius. Pneumius. And now Pneumius versus the absolute Pneumius. The Pneumius, Chebe Pneumius, if you will. Pneumius Yatsmas. Law 138. The ultimate intent. In hearing what's inside the voice of godliness. In other words, now that we understand that there's Chitzenius and Pneumius and the point is Tishma Bakoil to get to the godliness which is inside, says the Altarab, I want you to know there is a Pneumius to the Pneumius. Now that we understand that a Jew can meet godliness with the godliness which he possesses in his Nishama, we have to go even deeper and argue that there could be levels in the Pneumius of godliness which is touching the Pneumius of a godly Jewish soul, but then there is a level which is even higher than all those levels. Who it is bechinas sam shamshach as bechinas sinin say baruch to bring forward the godliness in sof begil leyam nafshir should be fully revealed in a person's nefesh who b'shmir as kol mitzvahs of through guarding all of his mitzvahs liyas k liyve aid legil is that to be a vessel and a light for this revelation who could liyas bechinas bittel v'cholo to achieve bittel and the way we're understanding bittel means union. Not with the revelation of godliness, but with the essence of godliness. Vezeolas is hayoshor, and this is represented not by the words kisishma bekoil in the beginning of the pasuk, which is already pnimiyes, but the word las is hayoshor ben yadeshem at the end of the pasuk that this yoshor is yoshor yachazufaneme. You're meeting not only godliness but God. Pnimiyes viatzma saying sof, and that's even deeper than kisishma bekoil, and that becomes the next step. Not only are you meeting godliness, you're meeting the essence of godliness. And the Rebbe says, I'd like to explain to you 
what is the meaning that even when you're talking about Pneumius, even when you're talking about godliness, there are levels. And that the level of Sasa HaYoshar is, if you will, the Pneumius of Pneumius, it's a level beyond which there are no levels. It's not a godliness which can be compared and contrasted by another godliness. But this because it's godliness is Pneumius. And this because it's godliness is Pneumius. Never then it's different levels of Pneumius, but a level of Pneumius beyond which there is no Pneumius. So the Rebbe prefaces by saying, he makes it, the Pesach says, Kill the Esad Hashem. There's two awarenesses in Havaya. There's two awarenesses in Godliness. It's a famous Pesach. He killed the Esad Hashem. So this Pesach, of course, is the basis for the very involved Hemsheikhim of Das Elyon and Das Tachten, which are found all over Hasidus, especially in Samach Tes and Takei and Ayim Beis. Tishrei Ayim Vov. And by the way, if you want to see a clear example between pre Ayim Beis and Ayim Beis, Learn Hemshech Rosh Hashanah Samach Tes, the first, I think, 75 pages. And then learn, learn Hemshech Rosh Hashanah Ayim Vov. It's the same my mother. It starts Tachna Das Elyin, it starts from Malchus and Atzilus, and then Atzilus and Keser, and, and that, then Keser and Ak, and Ak and Kav, and Kav and Lifni Atzim, so it's the same levels. But you'll see constant differences between the Ayim Beis and the Samach Tes. It's the same Hemshech. And those differences reflect the subtle difference, but the incredibly deep difference between the pre im Beis and the im Beis. But Das Eli Das Tachn is one of the most famous, it's a classic Hasidic dis- discussion that there's a higher knowledge and a lower knowledge. Now, you have to understand something. If we're talking about knowing God, and when you say there's a higher level of knowing God than a lower level of knowing God, you immediately have a problem if there's a higher level of knowing God than a lower level of knowing God, the higher level of knowing God makes the lower level of knowing God false. Because if A is true, B is false. And if B is true, A can't be true. So the Tater says, Ostwissen kill de Notwithstanding that intellectually, if Ani Hashem uh, Loishanisi is true, then there can be no room for a world. And that cannot be true. Says the Teda, you should know kill days, that there are different days. There are different levels, different perspectives. And although there is higher levels of unity, higher levels of understanding the relationship between Hashem and the world, the lower levels of understanding the relationship between Hashem and the world are also true on a lower level. And that's what the Apostle Kel Deus Hashem is trying to teach us. That there are two truths, and they're both true within themselves. Moreover, not only are the two truths, but Kel Deus Havaya. The two truths are in godliness. In other words, when we speak about two truths, what's the simplest way of describing two truths? What God knows and what we know. What God knows is that Eneid Movade. And what we know is something different. That's two truths, or two perspectives. But the Pesach doesn't say the two truths are the truth of God and the truth of man. The Pesach has killed as Hashem in godliness itself. There's a level of godliness that knows and a level of Da'asel. You know, Yehudi Allah, as he calls it here. And there's a level of godliness which knows and a level of Da'af Tachno Yehudi Tato. And this is very important stuff. And let's go back to the Aleph base. To Sha'ar Ayichad Vemunah. And this is fascinating and very important. The Sha'ar Ayichad Vemunah the Alter Rebbe begins with a question. The, the Kiseris, on top of the Pedagogue, chapter 1, it begins with a question. We must understand at least a little bit when the Zayar says that Shema Yisrael is Yehudi Allah and Baruch Shein Kved Bukhus Elohim Vodid Yehudi Tato. That when you say the Pazak Hashem Elohim Hashem Echad, this is the higher unity. And when you say the Maimir from the Gemara and the Chazal, <coughs> Pardon me. But this is the lower unity. That's how the Sheikh Al-Mana begins. Where does he answer this question? In the beginning of chapter 7, Pedig Zion. And um, his answer is very important. What does Hashem Achad mean? And what does Borah Shem Fed Mechus Al-Lelem Vahad mean? In the phrase, Borah Shem Fed Mechus Al-Lelem Vahad, what's the most important word? La'olam. In the phrase, Shema Yisrael Hashem Hashem Echad, what's the most important word? Hashem. 
that that's all you need to know. Bara Shayin played Bechos to the other verses. You should know there's an Oilam. But this Oilam is Vaad. Vaad is Echad. Vaad Bechalufi asks Vaad. It's one with the Eibishter because Shame Kaveid Malchus say comes into Oilam. Oilam means there's a world, but God is its master. Shema Yisrael Hashem Alkan Hashem Echad means there's an Eibishter, and He's real, and He's Echad. Echad means the world is not separate from Him. So the difference between Hashem Alkan and Hashem Echad and Bara Shayin played Bechos to is Ultimately, polar. Baruch Sheikh Ben Bukhus Levad says there's a world, but God's the master. Shmai says there's an Eibishter, and he's one. And if he's one, there's no room for a world. So the Zayir says, Shmai says, and Baruch Sheikh Ben Bukhus Levad is the Tato. And the Rebbe asks the question, what does this mean? Now, what is the question? What's hard to understand? The question is very simple. If Hashem Alakein Hashem Echad is true, Baruch Shein Bukhus Levad is a lie. And if Baruch Shein Bukhus Levad is true, how can Hashem Echad be true? And what does the Altar Rebbe answer? The answer is fascinating. The answer is Ano Emlech. Ano Emlech means Hashem says. From the perspective of Yechudi Allah, from the perspective of Hashem Alakein Hashem Echad, there is no world, there is no possibility for a world. But I want there to be a world. And I want it to be a world which is separate from me. Because I have a desire to be a king. And I ain't Melech Balayam. I cannot be a king unless I have subjects. And if I'm going to be a king and I'm going to have subjects, you're going to have to say, Oilam, that there is a world that Shem Kved Melchuseh comes into it to make it Vod Echad. In other words, the Alter Rebbe asks a real question. That if this, if a, if a shemul akain is yechudi Allah, how could it be a bar hashem yechudi tato? But he gives a real answer. He's not just politicking you. The real answer is that because the Eibishter wants there should be a world, and the Eibishter wants there should be a world that's separate from him. So we should make him into a king, and we should be subjects of this king, and so on and so forth. The credibility of there is a world that Hashem is a master. Rather than because Hashem is everything, there is no world, it's because this is what God wants to fulfill His purpose. That's the answer that Al Rebbe brings in the beginning of the Shari Which, of course, leads me to the story which I've told you so many times in the past, and it's, in, it's absolutely apropos right here. That the Holy Rosh Rebbe was a boy of six or seven. He was already then orphaned. His father, Rebbe Shalom, had passed away. And he was traveling with his mother and with his older brother, Rebbe Avram. And they encountered the Alter Rebbe, who was also traveling. And they told the Alter Rebbe that the Rebbe's Eniklach, the Rujna Rebbe was the grandson of Avram the Malach, Avram the angel. And of course, the great grandson of the Holy Magid, the Heilike Mitzitcher Magid, who was the Alter Rebbe's Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe, the Rebbe's Eniklach. So, of course, the Alter Rebbe stopped his wagon and he had the children brought into him. And the little boy that Absal Rujna, it was a boy of six or seven, said to the Alter Rebbe, if a Yid says, Hashem Alakein, Hashem Achad, how could he then say, V'yahavta? If a person declares that everything is God, how could you say, love God? And the Alter Rebbe responded by saying, that's why you say, Baruch Shem. When the Ruzh Rebbe left, Alter Rebbe turned to his Hasidim and said, this boy's question you didn't even understand. In other words, not only you don't understand my answer, you have no idea what the boy's question was. Now, I'm not going to pretend to understand more than Alter Rebbe's Hasidim. But I think the Pshat is, that's all I'm saying, I think. If there's nothing besides for God, you don't exist. If you don't exist, you can't love Him. Because Ahava, especially love, is Yesh Misha. You have to love somebody else, you have to love yourself. And if there's no you, how could you love? When a person says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alkein Hashem Echad, and he's holding by it, He's saying, not there isn't a world, there isn't a me. But if there isn't a me, how could you love the Eibishter? Now, who cares? So you don't love the Eibishter. And the answer is, it's a mitzvah to love the Eibishter. Just like it's a mitzvah to put on film, it's a mitzvah to eat matzah, it's a mitzvah to love the Eibishter. How are you supposed to love the Eibishter if there's no you left to love? He said, Hashem al Hashem So you add Baruch Shem, which means you're stepping away from the higher unity. Stepping down to the lower unity because God wants the lower unity. God wants a world that because there's a world and a lower unity, we can actually fulfill the mitzvah of the Ahava. What that means, in other words, is the biggest tzaddikim that ever lived 
had to step away from Bittl to the Ebishter to be Mekayim his mitzvah of Havz Hashem. And until they stepped away from their Bittl to the Ebishter, they pushed it, couldn't do the mitzvah. That's what the Ruzhin asked Al-Tarebbe, how could you love God if there's nothing but God? And al Rebbe says, you have to step away from nothing but God and say, I am, so you can do the mitzvah of Avas Hashem. And that's the credibility of the dais. There's a higher knowledge and a lower knowledge. There isn't only a higher knowledge and a lower knowledge because there's a higher creation and a lower creation. There's a higher knowledge and a lower knowledge because the Creator Himself wants that there should be a higher knowledge and wants that there should be a lower knowledge because He wants a world. So Kel Deus Hashem doesn't only mean there's two points of view, there's two points of view in godliness. And the second of those two points of view is Anoa Emlech. I want there should be a world and I want people who are going to choose me and I should be their king. So let's read. I'm beginning again from the beginning of 141. There's two levels of knowing God in godliness itself. Beis Deus. There's Yehud Yilad, there's the higher unity. Behold, it's on the lower unity. The higher unity focuses on God and says from God's perspective nothing exists. The lower unity focuses on world and from that perspective, God is only the master of an existent world. Yehud, the laws, Melmai, Lalamata, the higher unity is from the top down, the Kulak Meklachal. And from the top down, there's no possibility for a world. And Yehud, the Tato, is Melmata, Lamai, Lalamata, the lower unity is from the bottom up. In other words, first I am, and then God is. I begin as a yesh, as an independent being, and I acknowledge that somebody created me, and I should sub be subservient to him, and so forth. That's Yehud Tatok, Moshe Kostav Magamach. Says the Alter Rebbe, Mshteim Em Keches Elokus. These two perspectives are not God and man; they're godliness and godliness. In Atzilus itself, and godliness itself, there's a level of godliness that says Ein Eid Milvadi, and there's a level of godliness that says there is a world that Hashem is a master. Over. Yehuda Tato B'Shem Elikim. The godly name Elikim, which represents godliness and constra constraint, is the basis for the lower unity. There is a world that's subservient to Hashem, dependent upon Hashem. Hamet Samtem, who can contract, so mafrid and divides. Lies Alma de Prudib, Abchines Yeshu Chodesh, be a world which is separate with a self awareness and so forth. Because only then is there a possibility of Shayyir Bitla Yesh Tafke. If there's no world, there's nothing to be bottled. If there's no ego, there's no way to have love. Yehud the Tata provides those possibilities. And then the Rebbe says, Yehud Yilav B'Shem Havaya. From the perspective of godliness, from Havaya, from the Gil of Eid Sof, there's the higher unity. The higher unity says, Ein Eid Malvada, there's no world. And both of these unities are part of the divine plan. Both of these unities coexist. But I just want to add one thing. You can't at this point, you can't have both at the same time. Either Yehud Tata or Yehud In other words, if you're holding Ma'asham Al-Kain Hashem Echad, you can't do via Hafta. If you're holding via Hafta, you're not holding Ma'asham Al-Kain Hashem Echad. As we understood it from this story. And you'll see where we're headed with this. It says that Rebbe on line 145 is there, when he brings a bunch of psukim, Mishamayim, Hibet HaDashem, there is the idea of Hashem looking down from the heavens. Hashki, from Mein Kotshach, Hashem should look down from His holy dwelling, Min Hashamayim. Mishamayim hishkef again, it is a variety of psuk that connote, that mean to say, the idea that Hashem is looking down from the heavens. Pirish this means, Shenislavish bemidazu, that Hashem lowers himself into this midah. And this midah means either the midah of Yehudi Allah or the midah of Yehudi Tato, Allah Mishamayim, to oversee his world from the heavens. Either Melmail Allah from the top down, on the Yehudi Allah, how God observes the world as it's one with him. Yehud law means how Hashem knows the world. But he knows the world on a level of Elyin, and though he knows the world on a level of Elyin, he knows the world as the world is one with him. And then you have Sometimes Hashem chooses to in invest himself and to oversee his world from the bottom up, meaning to say there is a world. And God is its master. So, the, the lomdas here, the scholarship here is that Hashem knows before He knows, which is called Yadua. We talked about this in the Shur that we had on Tere Eid, in Vayerim Stam. But then there's Yodea, how Hashem knows through the tool of knowledge. 
in as much as Yodeya is concerned, there's the idea of Das El and the idea of Das Tacht. How he knows from the perspective of Avaya and he knows from the perspective of Alakim. So what is the point? The point is two things. Number one, there are different perspectives in the way God knows his world. Higher perspectives and lower perspectives. These perspectives are all in godliness because God wants a higher unity and a lower unity. That's the first point. And the second point is, you can have either this or this. You can't have both together. Either you have a unity that says there isn't a world, or you have a unity that says that there's a world which is subservient to Hashem. That's the way it is. Says the Rebbe on line 148. And now the Rebbe is revisiting what he said in the beginning of this Maimed on line 2, which we looked at the very first week. Vizel. And accordingly, says the Rebbe, I want to explain to you. When you can explain the contradictions, on that page 1, he brought one pasuk that says, "Ein Hashem al Yerev, the eyes of God, the eye of God is on those of fear him. And the other pasuk says, "Ein Avai al Tzadikim, the eyes of God, in plural, on the righteous. Now if you know Hasidus, you know that very frequently when you speak about one eye or many eyes, the one eye is higher than the many. The one eye is Atik, the many eyes is Zoh. But here it's not that way. The one eye is considered deficient. And the two eyes, or the many eyes, is considered advantageous. And he explains. Hashem looks only with one eyes on those who have fear for him. What is the meaning of fear? It's a person who has fear of God. Not from mitzvahs, not from teda, but from a personal study and meditation. He thinks about the Ebishter independently, and has some ideas about God that leads him to fear. This is called chitzenius. And on such a person, Hashem pays attention only with one eye. What does one eye mean? Either a higher level or a lower level, but not both. In other words, to use alternative language, there's a personal relationship between man and God, and there's a divinely inspired relationship between man and God. The personal relationship between man and God is when I have a relationship with Abishta based on my mind and my heart and my senses which is always going to be limited. And the Pneumia is taking relation with me through Tehidah Mitzvahs, which I'm connecting to Hashem on Hashem's level. Ein Hashem al means, if you have only a personal relationship with God, Hashem either sees you on a level where you're non-existent, or He sees you on a level where you're not entirely bottle, only one eye. However, Mashaykin al as opposed to the righteous, and to put it in context, they have mafteiches apnimius. In other words, they have a connection to Hashem not based on a personal relationship, but based also on teid and mitzvahs and tefillah. Sheim b'mchinas his kashes, which is a much deeper bond. And he brings the Maimah Chazal, Amud Echad v'Tzadik Shmei. There's one column, one pillar in my world, which is called Tzadik. Ki keil b'Shmaim v'Oretz v'Targum Unkulus d'Ochid b'Shmaim v'Cholu. Says Dal Tereb b'Mchinas Eini Hashem. Then they have two eyes. These two levels of observation. The level of observation that sees the world as one with God, which is Yechud Eloh. And the level of observation which sees the world as separate from God, but dependent upon God, which is Yechud Tatah. When a person is a tzaddik, Hashem is able to look at him simultaneously with both eyes. In other words, the idea that it's either Yechud Eloh or Yechud Tatah is on a lower level, on a superficial level. On the deepest level, and of course, I've already sort of given that deepest level a name. That deepest level is Yasha Yecha Zufa By walking straight, you meet Pimus Atma Sein Tzaf, you can have both the Yechud Allah subservient and the Yechud Tatah presence to be able to serve him and be altogether bottled to him. Says the Rebbe Shavin, they come together. Mimata Lamaila Kameimal Malalamat. The achtos of Yehuda Tato and the achtos of Yehuda Elah coexist because they're the same and there's no contradictions. So what's the dead head? What's the point? The point is, we're talking about Pneumius. Pneumius means Yiddishkeit, Tere Mitzvah, godliness. But we're saying that in Pneumius there's even a higher level. What's the higher level of Pneumius? Where a person is not only meeting the gili of godliness, but he's meaning the essence of godliness. And because he's meaning the essence of godliness, the Yehud law and the Yehud Tata are not a contradiction. You have in Hasidus a concept called Yehud, Yehud law and Yehud Tata. Now, honestly, I'm not sure exactly how to explain this. But the point is, 
In other words, without explaining it, the point is, Yechud means that there's only God. Yechud means there is you. The Yechud of Yechud and Yechud means there is only God, but there's you also. Now, how could you also exist if there's only God? Because you're also by God's choice. Your existence is not because God is concealed and hidden, but because God wants you to be so you could love him. God wants you to be so you should crown him as a king. God wants you to be so you can have bitl ta'a kadosh baruch And that's the meaning of any Hashem al tzaddik. Or to go back to the story, when the Rujan Rebbe says to al Rebbe, how could you say you have to? And al Rebbe answers, you say baruch shem. Now, what's the simple pshat? The simple pshat is, when you say Hashem al-Kain Hashem you're on a higher level. On this higher level, there's no... No you, you can't love. So you go down to a lower level of Baruch Shein Kveh Mechot and you declare, I am, I'm not, I am not, I am, and I love him. But now you see a deeper pshat. When you say Baruch Shein, Ata Hashem, Elkan Hashem Echad, you're not going away from Yechud Allah. You're adding Yechud Allah. There is only God. And this God who is all that exists wants that there should be a world. And since it's God who wants that there should be a world. The world that exists independently from Him is Him. And therefore I can love. In other words, there's two understandings of the Alter Rebbe's answer itself. One understanding is that if Yehudi Allah doesn't allow for Ahava, so you go away from Yehudi Allah to a level of Yehudi Allah so you could love Him. And the deeper answer is you're not going away from Yehudi Allah. They're both concurrent. They're both at the same time in the same place. You experience that there's nothing besides Fahakadish Barahu. And this reality, there's nothing besides Fahakadish Barahu warrants that there should be a reality that's loving Akadish Barahu, that's bitl to Akadish Barahu. And the Rebbe says on line 153, Yasha, you walk straight. And you meet the Pneumis Vyatsma Saints of. Yasha Mamish. Absolutely straight. What does absolutely straight mean here? First of all, absolutely straight means when you walk in the middle of the road, you meet Atma Sain Saf. But in addition, it means to use the Lashon from Chassidus. When you meet the truth of God because you're walking in the middle of the road, that meeting with God is not true only on the highest levels, it's in the very lowest levels. Like you have in Tanya, there's Emes. And there's Emes in every world. And the Emes in every world is the Briya Chatichin. And that's Yashi Echazifanim. When a person walks in the middle and meets the face of God, they discover that the face of God is found in every world, in its yashar, in its center. Even the lower achas, which says, I am and I'm dependent. There can be the bitl that there's nothing besides for HaKadosh Baruch Now how could it be? Yechud means I am and I'm bottle. Yechud means I am not. How can they both be at the same time? And the answer is because your existence is because Allah no emlech. He wants you to exist to serve Him. So your existence is a part of His bitl. Or Kamesh Yekosov, as the Pasuk says, Ki ayin ba ayin yid of that the two eyes, the eye that sees from Yechud Allah and the eye that sees from Yechud Yilah, are joined together. The eye that sees the world from a perspective where there is no world. Ba'ayin shemil matalamayla joins with the eye from the bottom to the top, which sees that there is the world that's dependent upon Akadish Barahu, and they fuse. And the words of the Zayah, which we say Friday night before Barahu, and the Kagavna Lamhevi Yachat Biyachat, that the two unities should become one unity. Shabakun is that the lower unity which says there is a dependent world, Shayru Mizgali Khudilah should be revealed a higher unity. That there's nothing besides for the Abish. But the Yehud, the Allah is not going to obliterate Yehud, the Tata is going to join with it. That means, Yosha, Yachazofaneme means that when you walk in the middle and you meet Pnimis Yatsma Saint Sof, the Pnimis Yatsma Saint Sof does not destroy you, it fills you. It comes down into you. First, you have to have a lower unity. Any shade of Mizgali Chodilai can't have the higher unity. Kemaimir, Kuchubri, Echad, Leil, Yosef, Chulu, you can't have the higher unity unless you have the lower unity. But more important, or in addition, not only do you first have a lower unity, then you have a higher unity, but the two unities join. And that's the end of the Pasuk. Kisishma Bekoil is Pneumius. Kisasa Hayosha, if you will, is Pneumius the Pneumius. Not only are you meeting godliness, you're meeting a level of godliness which doesn't separate levels. It's always present. 
When a person says Maidim, he submits to the Abishta. To all them Shemaid Allah Khaveri, someone who acknowledges to his French Emes who Kameshu Emer, that whatever he's saying is true. Kach, similarly, made the Manachtu Loch, we submit to the Abishta that Emes, it is true. The Kula can make love a whole that in the presence of a Kaddish Baruch nothing exists. Valei, Kashe, Nir, Eleni, Abbasar, Yesh, Meyai, Vachol, not as we see it with our physical eyes, that there is a world. But rather, even though we see a world, we acknowledge there's nothing besides for the Abishta. Oman, the Lekar of a Maidim, if a person fails to bow by Maidim, Chulu, Shetzarach, the Ezbechim, the Dayakal, Ponim, even if a person's human life's experience is, as our experience is. I do exist on a level of Maidim, you have to acknowledge Yechudei Allah. And ultimately, they have the two Achtasen have to join. Now, we're essentially finished. I, I don't have anything more to say than I already said. But these few lines, 161 through 165, we're going to read uh, what we've already spoken out. And I sort of want to emphasize what he's going to say, that there's, in effect, two levels of Taira. Because Taira's Pneumius, but Taira's Pneumius is at the expense of Chitzenius, right? The higher level is at the expense of the lower level. What he wants to add is that there's a higher level within Taita. Let's call it, for the sake of argument, the Pneumius of Taita. If Taita is godliness, Pneumius of Taita is deeper still. And of course, the difference is that the level of Taita, Bechlal, you reveal Pneumius, which is only one level. When you reveal the deepest level of Taita, it's a level of godliness which unifies all the level. And the lower level of Taita is the words Kisishma Bekoil, here inside the voice, the Pneumius, which is godliness. And the deepest level of Taita, which joins all the levels together, this is what we call Kitasa Yosha. Let's just finish, let's finish. To fully reveal, in other words, integrate, bring into yourself this level of Bittl, where, where simultaneously you exist, you exist and you can serve him. And you're nothing because of the Gili of Yechudi Allah. Lamata Kamela Maila, both unities are joined. Huwayadeh Teda is also, also through Teda. In other words, in addition to the Kisishma Bakoil, which is Teda, there is Yashi Yachzufaneme, which is a higher level of Teda. Kitishma Bakela de Shamalakach. You have to listen to what's inside the voice of the Teda. Bepnimi Yisakel, the inner dimension of this voice. Shepnimi Yizu, that hidden behind the Teda. There is the Pneumius HaTayra, and this Pneumius is it, and say, Baruch Hu Mamesh, Alamay Lamay 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 It's not the godliness which is revealed in Hishtalshos, which is also Pneumius, but the godliness which is altogether higher than Revelation, and higher than Hishtalshos. Visham, and this deeper level of Taira, this deeper level of godliness, is May Lamay 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 Then there's no levels of Yehudi Allah and Yehudi Tato, and there's no contradictions between Yehudi Allah and Yehudi Tato. From that higher level, you can have a fusion of Giloy, Bittl, Zelamata, Kamela, Maila. The highest Bittl could be down here. In other words, even from a perspective where there has to be a world so we can fulfill the mitzvah of Ahavo and so on, and Yechud Tato, you can experience the Yechud Allah simultaneously. This is the second level to do Yoshar, to be straight. Translates to Rabbi Pirosha Yoshar. What does it mean straight? Yashar Yechazu Faneme. That walking in the middle. And as I have permitted myself to enlighten Chabad, Moichin. And again, most Hasidic sources, most Chabad Hasidic sources, play this down. But there are certain instances when the Rabbeim said, Mir Zainadoch Chabadniks. And Chabad means your mind is a keli for Pnimi Zyatma Saints of. And the Hainu, this permits. Lasa is beis bechinus naim to make the two eyes, the yichudei law eye and the yichudei tato eye, be bechinus yosher in a straight line. A straight line means habriach atich and mavriach min akotzer la kotzer, but shvo echad they should be equal. Lemehevi echad be echad that they should join together and be one. But ayin but ayin yiru of a game. Now I just want to finish by saying, I gave you this shir. I trust that I enlightened you. I hope that I told you the truth. And all of us understand that there is 
There is so much more to learn and so much more to understand about this very sensitive question or idea of Yichud, Yichud, Yilo, and Yichud, Tata. And the Ebishtu will have to give us koyach and time and opportunities to visit these ideas again and again and again.